And um, I would like to announce the next panel, the next panel in the sphere of justice. And before our speakers are going to join us here at the stage, and I would like to give you an update on the results that we've gained in the last two years. So, the 16th of April of 2016 has been the first date for the Ministry of Justice has provided the, the unified, unified register in the open data form, and the uh, open data board has been born. The active development of the startup has started, and legal tax has started the development of the open data board. We've opened the, the data on the beneficiaries of all of the Ukrainian companies by the Ministry of Justice, and Ukraine has become the first country in the world to join the open ownership register the one of the main uh, one of the main tasks of this register is to create the final beneficiaries open database and the last year the ministry of uh, justice has received the open data government award for the highest standard of publishing the open data and i do believe that the journalists of buzzfeed that given us a command on the let us say not having the unofficial part of the information and uh, because of this award and because of the progress of the ministry of justice in providing the data that i do hope that uh, the journalists from the BuzzFeed are going to be now will have the go argument to use the open data. So the next panel discussion is the open data in justice, and I would like to invite the moderator of this panel. Please welcome Denise Hursky, the co-founder of 1991 Open Data Incubator. So please, Denise, welcome to the stage. Good afternoon. I'm glad to see such a substantial audience here. I'd like to invite to the stage the participants of the following panel discussion. Those are Oleksiy Dorohan, Natalia Vladimirova, Dmitro Foramny, and Oleksiy Vankin, and also Sergei Petuchov. You see, Sergei Petuchov was mentioned. Uh, the last, but he was the first to reach the stage. And I will be the only moderator of this forum who will ask the questions standing. So, dear colleagues, there are more of us than we hoped, but that's okay, because open data sphere in Ukraine is always, has always been developed in a very, in, uh, well, unequal speed and totally different tempo and now it really reminds me a startup thank you so much you see those are how uh, open data projects are done so in the beginning you begin to do something and after that you take investments for that so the first question I'd like to speak about is in fact the investments in the open data sphere because we have several respected projects which have already been able to get substantial not only for non-for-profit, not only for open data market, but for the market of startups and investments accomplishments. So now I'd like to begin with the project of Tembot patent board because there are certain recent achievements which we can speak about so I'd like to ask you about those three main components which you consider to be needed to the for the startup and which used to be open data based which helped you tell us which investments you got and how did you do that cool okay so we really were one of the first, or maybe even the first, Ukrainian legal uh, startup patent bot, which got investments from Hong Kong. And it was for us a huge event. Because we were the first, we were the pioneers. So as for the three necessary components to get investments, well, maybe the first one is the team without which any idea cannot be implemented. And if this team is rather friendly, cool, and self-confident, then, of course, it is already the reason to succeed. Because even after Hong Kong, we recently came back from the United States, and all of our negotiations with the potential investors were about who is behind the project. They say, you have such a cool idea, 
but as soon as you come to us, then maybe you'll get money. So, the first and the foremost is the team, which follows a super cool idea. We found the period of time when the registration of brands, and trademarks and intellectual property is very acute question. And this is our second component, which is really successfully cho uh, successful choice of the business niche. And of course, our confidence, self-confidence in our own efforts, because close to me, there is the Hill representative. This is the organization which was the first to believe in us and gave us, even saw our excitement, our sparkle in the eye and the belief, the faith and gave us a grant, so thank you so much for that. I think that without this sparkle, without the faith in ourselves, it's just impo impossible to gain anything. Okay, thank you. I'd like to come back to Oleksiy Ivankin, because maybe this is the first Ukrainian startup which made open data as a phenomenon of, uh, widely spread and renowned in Ukraine. So you, to some extent, are uh, making that without substantial foreign investments. So you were able to develop the project so much that it has become a huge one only thanks to your faith in it and the, in your nice team you gathered. So the question is the following. What could you advise to the startups which don't consider the project to be global, but want to develop it in Ukraine. What are your main takeaways, if you can? Thank you. First of all, we are getting investments, because this is the money of our users, and we see the only way when the project is developing, using the money it earns. But also Hill helps us thank them again, because sometimes we create the products which directly cannot be monetized, but they give a certain way with the help of which you can get to know something about the courts or the rule of law. So it's really important for our users. As for the advice, well, recommendations, of course, you need to understand that. Open data is already out of the academic or activists use state. All of the projects which will be uh, implemented further on, we wish them to be massive. And when we speak about mass products, we mean that when the product is used by lots of users, then there are lots of questions as for the quality and relevance of the data. And first of all, this is the only way. Not a single ministry which would publish the data in a very fashionable format and everything is okay. It won't matter if these data are not used by anyone. But when these data are used, you can always find errors in those data and they can always be not enough for the work or they are not renewed that refreshed that often so our advice is please understand we are not fighting for the data we are not antagonists anymore we are more trying to achieve partnership with the state just imagine we have 200,000 users they are following 50,000 of Ukrainian companies. How do they follow? On Friday, we published the file at the Open Data Portal from the Unified Register, State Register, but this file was created on Monday, and that's perfect. It is written in the decree. It should be done not later than in five days. So, on Monday, you've created the file, on Friday, you published it. But, it's perfect, but we can improve ourselves and we can understand that those people want to be published 
on the same day when it was created. So how do you explain the responsibility of the ministry for your users, to your users? They understand in what country they are living in, but they wish to change it, and we wish that too. But we understand that this is just hard job. This is not just from time to time certain memorandums or a certain uh, one-time things. This is the daily work. Okay, Dmitro Hill, the initiative which is known to many presentees and you know lots of startups. But with your initiative is the following story. Everybody knows it's differently. The startups know Hill as a legal tech and as a, an acceleration program. The donors know Hill as a program on the development of justice and law and implementation of new standards. In the international community, this is the global program which deals with the improvement of the law communities globally and works in several countries. I am sure that there is some truth in the middle. So what's the truth? What would you say for those people who do not understand which country they are living in, but for the international community? Which insights could you give from the countries where Hill is working and what Ukraine lacks for the people to understand that they're living in the normal country? What you have to feel? Which components are lacking? Thank you for your question. First of all, I think that we are living really in a very normal country. We have some place to improve. This is the main point. As for the Hill, Yes, really. Different people know this organization in a different way, but this is the reason, because in fact we are dealing with several directions of work and trends. This is the acceleration of startups. This is the research in the sphere of access to justice. This is the development of procedures. When we communicate with the startups, we focus upon our help and support of the startups. This is accelerations and grants. And when we communicate with the institutions, Ministry of Justice, for instance, we focus upon the research about the accessibility of justice, which we conducted in 2016. So we have an opportunity to look at the innovations in the law sphere and justice sphere. Yes, as you mentioned, we are working in several countries, it's true. We took the applications from the startups from 89 countries. In five countries, we have hubs where uh, there is a certain presence The Hague, Kyiv, Nairobi, Lagos, and Johannesburg. And each of these countries, and each of the countries we are cooperating with, they have their certain ecosystem. They are very special and peculiar. So I may say that, in fact, we have something to be proud of. And what to study from. What exactly? Well, I will mention an example. For instance, I like the approach because last year I've been at the Innovation Justice Forum in The Hague and there was a chief innovating officer there of the Ministry of Justice. They have such a position and a separate office which deals with innovations in the law sphere. So he said the following interesting thing. He said that the aim of our ministry, Ministry of Justice, is not the courts, not the law, as you can think, not even the procedures. It is happiness, happiness of just common people. And for me it was first of all a controversial thought. So I think that the research of the brain shows that dopamine is one of the reasons to develop. Dopamine is the feeling of fairness or justice and this is the feeling or the emotion which correlates with the justice as the system. So as for how we can study, for instance, there is a chief innovation officer in the justice sphere. This is the person anyone, anyone can go to who wants 
to create a startup or to improve uh, whoever has an idea. This is the unified or uh, one window for the innovation sphere. But we have to value what we have, because not every country has such a wonderful ecosystem as we have, where we have lots of programs and donors which focus upon the justice sphere. We have an amazing TAPAS program, a 1991 Opidenta Incubator, our partners, which directly are not working with the justice, but indirectly they help in that. We have the representation of Hill, and I have my colleagues here, and we have an opportunity to help them. Not every country of our neighboring countries have such a wonderful um, assist ecosystem. This is the community of legal hackers, for instance, the community which unites the people at the edge of the spheres of justice and law, and it is present at any conf uh, continent. I consider that in lots of the countries, lots of the countries can even get to know something new from us. So out of what you said, it seems to me Ukraine is a kind of an experimentator or even gives the fashion or leads the fashion. Yes, true. I just wanted to add, going following Dima's words, we just came back from this international summit of legal hackers, which unites all of the continents. And really, Ukraine was represented by our community in a very powerful way in comparison with other countries. So I consider there is a huge potential and I have only a very short question if I may ask to the deputy of the minister if do you have a wish or do you see an opportunity of such a position as chief innovation officer in the Ministry of Justice of Ukraine? The Minister of Deputy of Minister will have an opportunity to answer this question a bit later. And now I'd like to come back now to Oleksy. Oleksy is in fact working with the startups also, but a bit in a different dimension because this is the real business. This is the small and medium business. And in fact, the offices of efficient regulation helps those projects to be correspondent to all of the legislation norms and regulation to increase quickly. If we speak about the open data in the justice sphere and the law data, I'd like to ask you about the types of data you have to work with and the results of this program. Maybe a couple of words about the project itself for everyone to understand what's the effect of this program. Yes, sure. I will begin about the project itself. We are working on happiness, and happiness is possible only when the person is sure that tomorrow his or her success will never vanish, not the check will come and that uh, his or her company will never be closed. So when people don't have this assurance, those countries are poorer because people do not invest in their business. They invest only in the business which can pay back quickly. They preserve money in the buildings because it's not that easy to steal the buildings, not into the assets. And their profitability and horiz horizon of planning in the business is not that broad. And because of that, everyone suffers, the economy suffers because the business is artificially wants to stay as, as a small one. We have the lower competition and the consumers are suffering. Why is that happening? Because the entrepreneurs are not sure in what uh, in the requirements of the legislation. Vice versa, they are sure that sooner or later the check will come and they will find some certain violations. And when they find those violations, there can be fines, courts, corruptions. So they don't want to live in this constant fear. That is why our service, Start Business Challenge, is available on the link regulation.gov.ua. And it gives you the instruction how to act to be clean 
for the lore. Now we have 28 types of business. You choose any of that. You answer several questions, for instance, a restaurant. You answer several questions and you have step-by-step -step instruction or guideline from the state what you should do, not to have any claims from the state. It also gives access to justice, because not a single person, not a single entrepreneur is sure or goes to the state to, for, to seek for protection if he or she knows that he violated something, that someone can get to know about that and that he can get problems. So in fact, there are certain entrepreneurs who very often they don't go to police or to courts, to the law enforcement system, because they understand that after they go to the state, they can even suffer more. So basically on what data you're being based on? On the data. We are using the open data of the Parliament of Ukraine. And all of the advice that we're providing, they all have the links on the registration frame that is also included into our system. We update it every day. And we have the possibility to check the text online. On the framework of our other analytical work, we're using the data on the state judicial administration. We're using the the unified unified state register, and we're now also using it in close connection to the inspection portal. So there are the main three data sets in the justice sphere that we're using. So we started a year ago. We started with three different regional partners, with the three cities that we've launched with, and with around like ten types of businesses that we've covered. Now we have three more times partners. We have three tri triple triple the number of partners and triple the number of instructions. We're now being popularizing and promoting this, and we'll, we even have a radio show. So if you have even the radio show, then yeah, we will have this interpreter. I had some experience in working in the public administration, and I do believe that Serhii Petukhov, he's the chief innovation officer in the Ministry of Justice, actually. But the question is whether Serhii is working on providing happiness, let us say, <laughs> delivering happiness. And I would like to ask you about the happiness that started with the unified state register and all the strategy that the Ministry of Justice is now implementing in the sphere of open data, what is possible and what is impossible, and what is your vision of the development of this situation being based on the growth of the community that uses the open data and all of the, uh, all of the actions that we have around the ministry data? You know, we had a serious this thought about the, having this Ministry of Justice and being the Ministry. The, the, uh, we haven't thought about being the Ministry of Happiness, because the Ministry of Justice and Internal Affairs, like they have the combined Ministry of Justice and Internal Affairs in the, in the Netherlands, and maybe that's why they sometimes can also influence the happiness and the well-being of the citizens in a better way. But what are we doing in the sphere of the open data? I do believe that even this background on the high-speed development of the open and data in Ukraine. So the baseline of this has that, that Ukraine is one of the most open countries. And this is the strange combinations of the factors that have happened has can come in place after the revolution of the dignity. But we've opened a lot of data. This is the background for us to work with it, multiplied on the good IT infrastructure in the country. And I do believe that it gives us what the results that we now see. I also agree that it has. it's not only a pro piloting project now, it's a mainstream already. And from what I have seen already, why it's becoming even more popular? Because, well, this transparency is the first step for gaining the trust and confidence for attacking the car corruption and in the, the conditions when we don't have a lot of real investigation in place and then transparency and openness of data. This is this first step that has already been a part of the discourse in Ukraine that provides you at least the minimum warranties that you're controlling something that the government does, something that is, be, is taking place in the state and improving the situation of the business 
attractiveness in our country, which is a good situation nowadays, but still has perspective for further development. So from one hand, we are open for the further development and for bringing into life a bigger project, because we have a lot of opportunities in place. What we now have is only the beginning, and there's a lot of more that can be done. And I do believe there are two main directions here, the automatization of these processes. So in order to have this data automatically used, automatically linked, like for example, you come to the site of the renting out of a flat and you have this option to check who is the owner, there is no violations, there's someone who is registered in this apartment. I'm, I'm just fantasizing. Like, like you know, we had an answer from the state service and said, like, you don't need that. You know, I'm the chief innovation officer, so, you know, I have to dream a bit. So, you know, it would have been a good step forward. It could be a good step forward because you are sure about what you need. And then it's going to turn to this mass market because more and more people are turning to Internet. More and more people are working with the Internet. It's much more comfortable for them to get the information straight away, integrated into site that offers you a lot of services like or Rosetka. Well, I, I don't know. I, I do believe that a lot of data that Rosetka could have provided as an open data. But then again, this is a step forward. So automatization and integration. You do not only want to get the data of the Ministry of Internal Affairs or Ministry of Justice or at another site from the local authorities data or some other data at the other you would like to have a complex service as you need it so the example that we would like to reach and it's all very hard like for example the child is being born at the hospital then you will have the possibility to register the child to receive the certificate of birth to register yourself as parents to get registered to receive the state support on maternity that's something else like if you didn't know how to deal with a kindergarten and they told us that you have to wait for three years to get registered in the kindergarten garden so you can actually get registered and do the line straight away after the child has been born. So I do believe that we're going to reach this and there's a quite complex situation. Some of my colleagues are more open to this, some of them are more close, something needs more complex technical solutions, something needs, requires less technical solutions. But then again, we don't have the clear understanding yet, the clear understanding among the population that data is important and data can be paid for. So everyone is welcoming the open data, but everything has to be free of charge. Unfortunately, from some stage is not going to be working this way, as my colleagues have said. So some of the data is going to be used professionally by the broad number of people. So you have to verify them and clarify them. And so basically, it has to be paid for. And someone has to pay for that. So there's a lot of issues arising, but we're moving in the right direction. We have a lot of good in infrastructure in place. And I know that we have a lot of good startups that have the potential of turning into the global startups. And we're not going to have another competitor in place or a helper in place. I've had the conversation with IHUB. They're also interested in in uh, launching the new project, the new project for the uh, startups in justice and acceleration in the justice, uh, because it's very has a lot of perspectives in Ukraine. It's going to get even bigger. I do believe that a lot of startups that now uh, exist independently from the state, only the one that uses just the data uh, from the Ministry of Justice that just give the product to the market, I do believe we would be interested in the startups that would uh, develop the state and the public administration. I don't know whether we can render it or, or buy it or use it, but I think we would be interested in that. But on the other hand, we shouldn't be super optimistic on it. We know there is uh, the movement in the opposite direction. There's a lot of people who are dissatisfied with the transparency in Ukraine, a lot of people who are conservative, who do not understand the conservative, who are don't understand why it's going to be done in this way. A lot of people who are now terrified by, by but that a lot of data is about, for example, their incomes are going to be open. Like, for example, the just yesterday, our parliament has failed to to fail to vote for the European Convention on the Open Data, which is so for us, like for the access to the official documents, we are now heading the Europe. But then again, we have this opposition that has said that they don't want to provide the free access to the official documentation of the state. So this is an indicator for me that we are somewhere on the edge, somewhere on the brim. So we'll still continue moving to the opening of the data that belong to the state that might be 
left might be considering the interests of the political class, then I do believe it might be a bit complicated. But I do hope that this is an inevitable process, an inevitable process, and we will continue moving on the forward. The Ministry of um, Justice is now open, but before I haven't been uh, the Chief Innova Innovation Officer, but you can turn to me in Facebook. Uh, and let's be in it. So you're not dealing with happiness directly. No. Okay. So we have. Um, couple of uh, specific questions to ministry. Do you have a question, Alexei? You have questions? Yes. In open data boards, what we see, we see a very, let us say, interesting topic and interesting issue that we see that some of the state services that are going to the private, turn into the private sector. So they have the private counterparts and private actors and the registration of businesses. For me, as an entrepreneur, just to imagine that 10 years ago that I can register a company through a notary office, that it would have be been impossible. And I do believe like uh, that in 10 years I won't even understand why should I turn to the registrator if I have a notary in place. So when I see that, we do understand one simple thing, that something that is important for the businesses and for the entrepreneurs and the citizen is now turning to be important for the state also. So if we speak about the private concept bus, they say that they're very effective. But how can I choose the better private counterpart who deals with big projects, with big amounts of money in the city because I cannot do that I don't know how to do that because the register of the executive uh, the executive the private counterparts is now being published but it is on the site with, the, with this like the single pro the, the unified protocol of the debtors is published and so, so basically it is accessible so for example I cannot I should not ask I, I should not be know that in Borispol that I cannot leave the country I shouldn't get it at the police office that I can sell my car because there's a lot a lot of limitations that are provided to the debtors so I have to get the notice that I'm enlisted in this debt list. So this data is now being provided at the site. And of course, this is the part of this open governance that we are all mentioning about, but no one does a lot of the, this fear. So this is the point that is going to be profitable for the state, because the state is also interested in those Ex executive measures to be working effectively. So the state has to know whether those executive services and these private executives are whether they're working effectively. So maybe the state execution service won't be even possible, won't be even needed. Maybe the private officers have already done everything in place. But the answer can be only provided by the data. And this is something that this is something that we also have to keep in mind. So there are always these causing points when the businesses and the state are going to have their minds met when they both are interested in the opening of the data. And another checkpoint where the interests of the state and businesses crosses, when we're analyzing the conflict of interest, there's always a question, this beneficiary, this private entrepreneur, this director, is it the same person or no? This is one person or no? We cannot do that clearly because like for the directorship and director board, they do not identify the address, some of the beneficiaries, they do not identify addresses. And we do understand that the uh, personal tax code is a personal information. This is not publicly published. So there is some kind of the need for the public identifier of the person. So when we said that Ivankin, private interpreter and director Ivankin is the same person, and like you know, he's paying for himself. So this is quite easy to be done. And what is important for the state, important for the state that states that the fighting corruption is one of the main areas for that. So there's also the identifier that this member of the family, this private entrepreneur, the beneficiary, he is the member of the family of the public official, but it will also provide the possibility to automatize this data to work with this data automatically, not only using the data from the black market. Well, thank you for your thank you for your remark. There's two parts of this question. So the first, uh, quite technical one. In order to do that, we need to have the technical capacities to do that, and we do understand that we has to be done. Well, like speaking, for example, if every one of us would have uh, the email that has been granted, for example, by the government, so we can send all of the official information that is according that is based on your information so it will, it will simplify most of our communication like for example any kind of judicial notification or 
when you've been drawn into your army so it would have been much easier for us we would just send you an email whether you read it or no but uh, legally it means that you have seen it and if you haven't reacted so you will have the legal consequences on that this is like a technical moment that can be resolved but but nowadays in Ukraine we have a problem with that because the state doesn't have the unified list of all of the population we don't know who are our citizens so we've just started to work with a demographical register that is now being fulfilled and there is a lot of problems with that also a lot of challenges with it also so that's not a question of the closest future but if we put it as a main aim then we can do that but then again it goes up in close connection to the second part of this data the personal data and protecting the privacy trust me you don't want me at the Ministry of Justice to looking at your name and your photo to see everything that has happened to you in your life starting from your birth to your school scores how you enrolled to the university all of your test results who you have been dating how many times have you crossed the state border what have you bought what have you sold because potentially by identifying a person you can get receive all of this data when you identify the person every data when you're contacting the state officials or when you're using the state register it can be also linked to you and I would have the full profile the full history of you even though you wouldn't like me to have it or you would like me to use it only with a specific need I'll be I'll be very brief I'll be very brief um, so uh, what do I mean in the whole world the question of the protection of the personal data is a very highly debated topic unlike Ukraine unlike Ukraine when people are not ready to pay for the data and the people do not clearly understand that the the value of their own personal data and their privacy like okay someone knows but what can what, what, what can bad things happen because of that so I do believe this innovation steps that are going to take us forward there's always going to be discussed so the technical part of it and the second moment whether we really want uh, to have this opportunity to identify this person that this graduate from this school the grad this student and this private interpreter and this person that has been clarified by the register this is the same person whether you want that every person could reach this data about you or you believe that there's n there hasn't to be done and so I do believe that we have to draw a line, uh, draw a border, draw a line between that, between the personal data and open data. The open data is free. Uh, they are depersonalized, so they are always available in the machine reading um, way, in machine reading site. They are accessible for all of the other people. So everything that doesn't fall to this category, they are not considered the open data. So you can sell it, you can save it in any format that is comfortable for the state. But then again, that is made, but it's also stated in the law on open data. There are demands and requirements for this part that do fall under these requirements on personal data. We are now slowly turning into the day, into the into this into the time of GDPR and Ukraine cannot be standing outside it because we have the association with the European Union this is a super brief question but how does ministry deals with that whether you're rebuilding the processes concerning the data because of the GDPR policy like so okay everyone knows that the GDPR I don't understand what it means I even opened up and read it and even when I has been in the com committee on the justice with the Association of US in the EU so the personal data is a part of our committee so we had the colleagues from uh, the directorate of the justice of the European Union that should have a full mass about what the, the directorate offers in this new direction. I have listened to a person a half an hour. I didn't understand what they said. So what I do believe, what I now feel is the general situation. We're all trying to find out what is there in place. But um, there's one thing that can that can help me with that because I'm responsible for the protection of the personal data and we have the ombudsman who's responsible for the protection of the personal data not the government we have liquidated the specific service at the ministry but now this is the office of the ombudsman and they do a lot to protect the personal data and even when the the some solutions that are being stated by the government they're following it not to get a lot of intrusion to the rights of the to, to the rights of the uh, people and the last issue when we had the question of the personal data rose that was when we've had the order approved do we have does anyone of you has the children who go to the first grade because like if you have there is a new order of how you get people enrolled into how you get children enrolled into the first grade and so 
they had some ideas about what data should be opened for about these first graders. So they follow this. They follow this, but turning back to the main question, it's hard for me to say how it's going to change the directive. So when someone is going to write something, what they mean and how seriously the data is going to be protected, whether you can take photos of the European people or so on and so forth, then, then I will think about it. So we'll have, we'll have a question to the metro before that, but before we turn to this final part of our discussion, so I would like to ask the dear audience to listen about some questions, to think about some questions, because we'll have just time for one, two questions from the audience. And while you're still thinking, we would like to talk to Dmitro, and then I'll give you the opportunity to pose all your questions. Thank you, but I will. I don't have a question. I have a small remark. I would like to have this. Having this opportunity, I would like to invite Mr. Pituchov for um, the final of the competition, Innovating Justin Challenge. We would like to have you here once again. So the 27th of uh, September, we would like to invite you and both and the minister, and we would really like. Uh, we'd be really glad to see you at, at this event, and also all of the colleagues who are interested in the innovations in justice also would like to invite you for this event on the 27th of September. Thank you. There wasn't a question, but uh, there is one more. So please, uh, yes, yes, invite us someplace also. Easily, I can do that easily. So the addresses, um, if we if we will ask how many people and the projects have the addresses included in, or connected to the open data, who has the addresses? OK, they're using the addresses, but the addresses is a real problem. And I know that for the Ministry of the Justice of Ukraine, there is a working group that works with the legislation of Ukraine that, that uses the address register. I would like to support it, and I would like to say that this is a very important topic for the community of open data, and we're ready to work on it. We're ready to participate on the further development of us, so invite us, and we will help you and give you some advice. So one of us invited us, the other one asked us to be invited. That is how we are going from time to time. That is why we have such a powerful community in Ukraine. Another question from the audience. Okay, from you first. Uh, so I have a very short question. The Institute of Sociology, Natalia Otenko. So which open data about happiness do we have in Ukraine? Okay, and the next question. Let's get several questions. This is a very reasonable suggestion. So over there, a question. And then Mr. Alexander, I can see. Uh, Andriy Vasilenko, the Ministry of Education and Science. The question is more conceptual one what the open data is. Because in the process of my work, I faced different conceptual visions. Open data is a mandatory and compulsory accessible and free or just accessible. But you have to pay or maybe you have to, to, to take certain fee for that. Can these data still be considered open? OK, thank you. And Alexander, I have a personal question to Mr. Sergei Petukhov. Up till the end of this year, or I would see to the beginning of the next one in the Unified State Register, there should be reflected the available permission and license documents of the economic entities. So this system is already under the balance of the Ministry of Justice or some state enterprise. So if you may, would you please comment upon them? Do you have enough time to do this work? Honestly speaking, I don't know about that. I can hear it from you from the first time. If you say it has to be done, I'm not a profile deputy on the registers. So I can ask and give you an answer, though I think that it won't be that easy to implement. I will check it again, and the next time when you invite me, I will know the answer. I understand that, but I just don't know about that. I don't know about everything. I know only about happiness a bit, and that's it. Thank you for the question. We should have heard another one. So please, the last question, the last question uh, from Mr. Petuchov. Would you please tell how, in which order, are you being prepared to open the registers of the owners of the state of Ukraine according to the Act of Declaration on the State Sovereignty? And a short question, where do we have the Act of Declaration about the State Sovereignty in the regions? Do you know about that? Those are those letters of happiness, in fact. 
So, Mr. Peterhoff, would you answer the last question if you want? Well, just in short, uh, uh, all of the state official institutions are having the, those letters about the sovereign right of the Ukrainian people. It's very uh, difficult to comment upon that because this is just a very creative part. Okay, as for the free data, could you tell us about the data for fee or for free? Well, we are not trading the data. Of course, there is the public information and, of course, some of the public information cannot be given in the format of open data for free. For instance, the real-time API of the Ministry of Justice for the, United, uh, for the Unified State Register. This is a very logical thing that we pay to the Ministry of Justice when we have uh, get the information in real time. But when we speak about open data, it is not only the machine-readable format, but also a license which tells us that you may use these data free in any software, in any service, anywhere. In more details, you can look up for a very precise definition in the decree number 835. It is precisely written that it's for free, machine readable, and what, and that these data has to be depersonalized. So, we are out of time already. I'd like to ask you to give a round of applause to our speakers and participants of our panel discussion. Thank you so much for this discussion. And if I understand correctly, we'll have the coffee break now and you will be able to communicate with the participants of the discussion if you didn't have enough time to ask the questions just behind the curtain. So, thanks to all of the participants of the discussion.